right. Yeah, undefeated. Yeah, so it should be a pretty good game. You know, you got Aaron Rodgers versus the undefeated Cardinals. So let's, we're going to try to get through this done in an hour and a half. And, um, you know, it won't make kickoff, but pretty close. Um, just because it's a good game. Right on, right on. All righty. So, All right, so today we're going to be talking about maturity, and I'm not going to, and I'm not talking about trader maturity. Um, I kind of have a webinar on that on growth of the trader, which is a pretty good one that I think everyone should check out. I, I put a lot of, um, I put a lot into that one. I I, I remember um, the evolution of a trader. Um, that was one of my personal favorite ones. But no, we're going to be talking about like move maturity, and I wanted to call this. My Slack just died. So. What's going on? I didn't do that. I didn't click that. That was weird. Did that happen for everyone? That's like that. And then this. Okay, cool. But uh, yeah, so we're going to be talking about move maturity. Like what exactly do like, you know, stocks move. And I might do a part two on this to really full, further elaborate on the multiple different setups and what like mature setups look like and what don't. But uh, um, this one will be a generalized one. Probably this is probably going to be like a part one. Uh, this is really part two to the to the webinar that you guys should watch before this one, which is prematurity. When we talk about premature moves, so that's the prerequisite webinar for webinar for this one. We're going to be talking about maturity here, and like I said, I'm going to try to make this webinar kind of short and sweet. So um, I'll probably make a part two of this one and go into more detail. Maybe next week. Maybe uh, in the future maybe in a couple of weeks. But anyway, we're going to be talking about the maturity of moves, like what stocks need um, to kind of do to really fully evolve as a setup. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's get going. So we're going to talk about the market sentiment first. Um, and as you can see, mostly, uh, mostly bears as usual. But I mean, the bulls that we got, a couple of these were bulls, but I think uh, later on in the week, they kind of turned into bears based on their non continuum they're non, they're kind of non-continuation, like fun, like fun was, you know, fun was definitely a bull, but then like the fact that it just didn't continue at all kind of got destroyed, you know, that being same thing, Mark, and we'll go over those sympathies and why I didn't, why I think they didn't really work. Uh, but definitely uh, strong bulls, AGRI was, was huge, IINN was huge, BKKT was huge, LCID was big today. So we definitely have some strong bulls and, you know, we're, we're kind of seeing, we're in this market right now where we're kind of seeing, um, um oh shit uh we're kind of in this market i i saved the wrong one i always do that we're kind of in this market where um i normally catch myself but i didn't catch myself because i duplicate it but we're in this market right now where um uh we're basically having like a hundred percent runner at least every single day and uh for shorts uh shorts get excited about that until they short the stock that's up 70 percent and it turns into 130 percent like um, that's, you know, like, so it's, it's kind of a market for everyone there. It means that there's a lot of opportunity, but shorts definitely have been getting caught. Uh, and some of them have been getting caught kind of big. The best move guys takes time to develop. And it's really funny. Uh, uh, I, I drew, I want to, I'll go over it. The best move takes time to develop. Right. And so these are the two charts that I grew that I, um, that I stole from investopedia.com when I typed in breakouts, typed in breakouts. And um, Investopedia came up, so I took those, very generic. But anyway, for new traders, you do not want to be taking premature setups or what I'm going to call just-in-case trades. Like, I'm going to get in for this just-in-case it happens or just-in-case it goes without me or just-in-case blah, right? You know, plug that in or, like, just-in-case, like, it's one of those kind of, you know, I have shares and no one – like, I'm going to take this just-in-case, like I have borrows and it's, and, and it's not easily borrowable. Maybe that means it's going to tank. I'm going to take short it just in case it's that opportunity that I get to, you know, if the setup's not there and you have borrows and it's not a good time to short it, and it's not a good setup, then don't short it just because you have the shares, right? You know, there's a lot of just in case scenarios where you'll just take the trade just in case, right? Now, 
for some more experienced traders for different styles, it, it can be applicable. But for new traders, you guys shouldn't be doing this. Your size range isn't, um, you, you have to be able to range your trades as far as size goes. Like some are just whatever, some are just whatever trades. And some are um, like, you know, like, no, I wanna make some money with this trade. Like, I think this is worth risking something. Right. And so you have to be able to have a range for that. And a lot of, for a lot of young traders, mentally, you guys can't, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I, I'm sure you guys have a problem with getting in five shares, right. Or 10 shares. And so like, a, like a, a, a decent sized trade might be one or 200 shares. Right. And that's for a good setup for some of you. What, how are you going to take a just in case trade? Like a, Oh, well maybe trade. How are you going to take trades like that? And, and make them size appropriate. You're going to have to trade 10 or 20 shares. And I promise you guys won't do that. <laughs> like traders, like, like, like for, for a lot of traders, 100 is like just mentally the minimum for a lot of traders. And if you trade your normal trade, like 300 shares, you can't be trading a ho-hum trade, one or 200 shares. It's just, it, you can't do it. So you don't have the size range. So you really need to just focus on the, the best stuff. Best to stick to the mature setups. And so a rule of thumb for what a mature setup is, is like for a long, you want to have a consolidation that you can lean on because a consolidation from the very first video I ever did, a consolidation proves a stock can trade at this level. And the longer the consolidation, the better because the longer the consolidation, the more normalized the price becomes. And this is really what fucks shorts, by the way. This really fucks shorts when a stock, and guess what stock did it? It's DWAC, right? This really fucks shorts when a stock rips, goes sideways right? It rips and goes fucking sideways. That sideways action is telling, is proving that the stock can trade, can buy and sell and churn at a high level. Which means you have, I mean, that's true support. Like we always look at support, like what's the point down here? What's the resistance for the, the, the peak up here? Those are support and resistance points. Long consolidations are great for support. That's, it's, it's a really strong support when a stock consolidates in a range for a long time, right? So have a consolidation that you can lean on. If there hasn't been a lot of consolidation, you probably don't have as much support as you think you do, right? So a mature setup will have a consolidation in it. Um, for short, uh, what you really want to lean on, you gotta, you're not going to get the same opportunity for consolidations at the highs. It doesn't really happen, right? That's not the way shorts work. A, a, a short is not like, Look, a big consolidation at the high and then a tank. Oh, I can trust that consolidation. No, that's actually like kind of bad. Like it is a fail, but it showed that the stock wanted to trade up there for a long time. 